it comes as no surprise that operating a farm may involve hazards. Machinery, tractors, livestock, chemicals, electricity, fuel, and the routine work of farm come with the potential for an emergency event to occur. By their nature, farms are located in rural areas and often greatly isolated from centralized emergency response services, and receiving help from first responders in a timely manner is often a challenge. These factors contribute to the critical need for farms to develop an emergency action plan. Natural disasters, like inclement weather events, will understandably increase response time and challenge the best efforts of emergency responders. While there is never a good time for an accident or emergency to occur, it is a good bet it will happen at the worst time. In October 2010, we were awoken in the middle of the night to a uh, poultry alarm. Upon looking out the window, I realized that we had a major disaster on hand. One of the houses was fully engulfed in flames and uh, was beginning to spread to a, the second building on the operation. My first concern was, of course, the poultry and the fuel tanks behind me uh, hold uh, 1,600 gallons of propane. And the ability for the fire department to access the far end of the buildings to keep the fire from spreading from the one that was fully engulfed to surrounding buildings. From the farmer's perspective, thoughtfully developing an emergency action plan can be useful in avoiding accidents in the first place. Proactive consideration of potential emergencies that may occur shifts the emphasis to preparedness instead of a defensive response. Because farmsteads and their operations are dynamic, a critical phase of the planning process prior to modifying or expanding the farm should always include an evaluation of potential accidents or emergencies. During the fire, we realized that we're, there were some issues that we hadn't addressed, such as cutting the power to the entire farm. Uh, fortunately, the fire happened in October, so it was cool and we didn't have issues. However, if a fire or an emergency caused a power, power to be cut from one building, we needed to have the, uh, the ability to have power in another building if it was extremely hot or extremely cold for the comfort and well-being of the birds. After standing watching the, the chicken house burn, we had a lot of concerns in the aftermath about fire safety, and it really put fire safety in the forefront of our minds. So we offset our, our utility rooms. We also put another access point around the chicken houses so that we could get from one end to the other without having to go through the fire zone. We also tried to set the, the propane tanks far enough away to where we could have a little bit more access to them and keep them a little bit off the building to prevent um, explosion hazards or fire hazards there. In order to increase the benefit of the emergency action plan, farmers are encouraged to cooperate and coordinate their planning efforts with local emergency planning committees and emergency first responders. The benefits of engaging in a planning process with all community members that might be impacted by an accident are numerous. It's unreasonable to assume local emergency planning and response personnel will understand the numerous potential hazards on the farm. Farmers willing to cooperate and coordinate with emergency planning and response professionals can facilitate a process that provides the community with a broader understanding of the hazards. Just as important, the process of cooperating and coordinating provides the emergency response community with the opportunity to advance their knowledge of the farm and the operations that occur on them. This in turn can benefit their response efforts and enhance their safety if an event occurs that requires a response by emergency personnel. Just a quick bullet point list of what's on the farm, what the hazards are there, contact information, water sources, and things like that is very beneficial to emergency services. Um, it allows us to get there and not have to search for these items, uh, not have to look for the electrical panels or if we want to isolate it, um, the building. So um, having this information is crucial to emergency responses and able to get the farms back up and running uh, in a timely manner. Additionally, Collaborating with emergency planning and response professionals can give the farmer a better sense of the accident preparedness capabilities available within their community. When viewed holistically, the information sharing that occurs through cooperation and coordination can drive improvements in the emergency planning and response capabilities of communities. It can assist communities with identifying capability gaps, which can ultimately contribute to minimizing the consequences of accidents. This video is meant to support the efforts by the National Association of SARA Title III program officials 
to broaden participation from the agricultural community to share farm-specific information with emergency planning and response professionals in order to enhance farm safety, the safety of first responders, and the overall community. This initiative is based on the concept of coordination and cooperation between facilities, local emergency planning committees, and emergency responders. This video, which will be the first in a series to support a comprehensive emergency planning and preparedness program for animal agriculture, will focus on things farms should do to coordinate and cooperate with emergency planning and response professionals in their community. A logical and necessary start point is to identify yourself to the local emergency planning committee and emergency response organizations. If you have difficulty identifying these groups, you can very likely receive help from the head of the community's fire department or chief of police. Make an effort to attend and participate in regularly scheduled meetings of these local emergency planning and response organizations. If you have any type of emergency action plan or written emergency response procedures for your farm, they should be provided to emergency planning officials. The plan should indicate that the information included in it is confidential. If one doesn't exist, strongly consider developing a map or diagram of your farm that identifies inhabited buildings, barns, and storage sheds that may house chemicals or electrical distribution panels. Make this information known to emergency response personnel. Obtain and maintain a record of all chemicals stored on the farm. Safety data sheets for each chemical which detail hazards, reactivity to other chemicals and substances, and the proper way to handle and store each chemical are available online or from chemical suppliers. Indicate the locations and quantities of these chemicals on the farm map or diagram. Invite emergency planning and response professionals to your farm. No two farms are alike. Be prepared to tour the farm with these groups to better help them understand the operations that take place and the facilities that may be affected by an emergency. Ask for their advice and feedback. As emergency planning and response professionals, they are trained to look beyond the obvious. Take their input and incorporate it into your emergency action plan. Future videos will address the information that local emergency planning committees and emergency first responders should provide and the actions they should take as part of an initiative to coordinate efforts with farms and other stakeholders in the community. Additionally, these future videos will take a more detailed look at each animal group, including beef cattle, dairy cattle, egg laying, poultry and swine operations to address hazards and potential emergencies specific to their facilities. While the general information and protocols outlined in this video will help with both emergency planning and emergency response efforts, more importantly, it will help farms to enhance their emergency preparedness, the ultimate goal of this unique initiative. This message was brought to you by the U.S. Poultry and Egg Association. Funding for this video was provided by the International Poultry Expo. Please support our exhibitors and we invite you to attend.